If you were listening, and I, I'm sure some of you were to uh, to Fox News just a couple of minutes ago, the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, it's just an average of 30 leading companies. It's not the Russell 2000 or the Standard & Poor's 500, but it's a, it's a, it's an average of some of the largest companies doing business in in America. And right now, it is a, it is on a slight rebound after a really rough week last week. Anyway, we're counting from seven days back in the middle of last week. Uh, up about 283 points at the moment, which is uh, which has made back some of the losses from just yesterday when it was down 588 points. Talk about that a little bit later in the program this morning because we want to see if this actually is going to hold and stabilize before we get into any depth on this. Also coming up in about 20 minutes, Steve Millington. He is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. I think I put another syllable in there, chairman. There you go. Um Somehow uh, it just managed to create a new word. Well, Hillary Clinton does it. I guess I'm allowed to do that as well. So Steve will be along, and we'll talk a little uh, a little Republican politics, and maybe he'll even reflect on some of the uh, opposition too as well. Uh, in fact, uh, because some of the opposition may be going to jail. And finally, I wanted to open the program just on a quick note today uh, about a couple of things that, that caught my attention. Uh, I am in a closed Facebook group that deals with the issues related to the refugee resettlement program here in the Magic Valley. The group has put together a petition, and they are seeking a ballot measure next May. Now, this will have absolutely no impact on the resettlement program coming up here this fall, this October. And and I was amazed to see a letter from Congressman Mike Simpson yesterday, which was actually sent to one of the members of this committee who had written him with concerns, and he's even admitting we don't really know what the makeup of these refugees is going to be. Well, wait a second. He goes on to say that they are vetted, that they that they are they are screened, and, and you know that there's a lot of work done on that. But then he contradicts himself in the in the form letter, a form letter. You know how those go. A dear constituent, thank you for sharing your concerns, although they're not mine. But it goes on to say, we don't really know who these people are, so I can't tell you who's coming here. Oh, but they will be vetted. <laughs> well, which one is it? Nine minutes after eight o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, which is, of course, our web presence. That means you can listen to us anywhere all over the world by clicking on the Listen Live icon in the, uh, the right hand uh, corner, upper right hand corner of that website. So you've got people in politics still dithering on this, and it'll, it'll happen in October. Let's be honest about that. No one is going to come along and say, all right, stop. In fact, I was talking with a member of that committee just before showtime today, and he explains, even if even if someone at the last minute said stop here in Twin Falls, the 300 would go to Boise. Also yesterday, someone sent me a list of the corporate sponsors in the Boise area who are involved with bringing these people here. Folks, it is a lengthy list. It is some of the best known business people and, and lineups in, in all of Idaho involved in this. Why? Well, because again, it comes down to being profitable. I also learned today that this program will assist refugees for three to six months. Then after that, they're on their own. And and some of them are living in what you might call, I mean, they can get away with it because they have not filed any paperwork. It's not bigamy, but I was told this morning in that very phone conversation as well, you have some of these people who are living with their four wives in this community, and some of the wives are not happy about that setup and would like to get out but don't realize that they can. So a lot of these people, after three to six months, are just simply left on their own, and they they just don't understand how... I mean, going into a, going into a grocery store and actually trying to send a, a wire transfer at the service counter requires a translator. And a lot of these people have never done any banking in their lives. So they're essentially just being dumped here. That the local people who are actually making a buck from this program, they profit, the profiteers take their cut, and then they ignore these people and they, they just move on. So, and of course, those people often end up taxing the welfare system, and that means the rest of us pick up the tab. We've been through all of this before. It's going to happen in October. It will not be stopped. Now, it could be stopped later on, and that's why we may have, it needs to be certified. A couple of different folks, including our county prosecutor, uh, Grant Loeb's, need to certify this petition. But if it's certified in the next couple of weeks, there will be a ballot measure next May. And that will allow voters in this, this county to reject 
or accept this program, this refugee resettlement program. So it will finally go to the masses instead of just being controlled by a handful of special interests who are making money from it. 12 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. However, there's one other thing to remember about this. We may not be able to talk about it for much longer. And if we can't talk about it, then we won't be able to address it. And we won't be able to bring it to the public's attention. And we could have tens of thousands of these people coming here because it will all be flying under the radar. What am I talking about? Well, I came across this today at Crisis Magazine. Efforts to silence clergy continue apace. Now, we're all familiar with stories. In Canada, some some pastors have been told that they have to pay fines or stop preaching because they read those passages from the Bible that say homosexuality is a sin. It's not just Canada. It's happening in, in very many countries in Europe as well. And this has been going on for at least 15 years. In Norway, there was a Lutheran pastor. I believe he was threatened with prison if he continued, even in his own church, from the pulpit, to reference those biblical passages. In other words, you're not supposed to mention them whatsoever in some of these countries. That's what liberalism has done for us. And we're told, of course, that we have freedom of religion. It's one of the five liberties guaranteed in our First Amendment. But now we're being told, well, other people's interests and their sexual habits, no matter how naughty you may think they are, that those trump your First Amendment right. So that's, that's something that, that we are, we're in uncharted territory here with all of this. All right, let's, let's then extrapolate and go beyond that. The writer of this piece goes on to say, As in other parts of the world, homosexuals in the U.S. are a protected class, criticizing them from the pulpit or any venue. That could be radio down the road. May soon be considered a hate crime, but homosexuals aren't the only privileged group in much of the Western world. Muslims have also acquired a most favored status. Once again, the trend is most pronounced in Canada and across the Atlantic. Consider two recent headlines. Belfast pastor on trial for offending Islam and Quebec bill targets people who write against the religion of Islam. So, in the French-speaking province of Quebec in Canada... Apparently, if you you write a newspaper column or maybe something online and you criticize Islam, you could find yourself either fined or jailed. And in Belfast, Northern Ireland, speaking out about Islam could also result in the same thing happening to you. In an interview with the Belfast Telegraph, a pastor by the name of James McConnell said he had no hate for Muslims. Quote, My church funds medical care for 1,200 Muslim children in Kenya and Ethiopia. I've no hatred in my heart for Muslims, but I won't be stopped from preaching against Islam, unquote. So guess what? A fellow by the name of Dr. Raid al Wazan, who is the director of the Belfast Islamic Center, yes, even in Ireland, Northern Ireland in this case, so now they've got two occupations going on simultaneously, the British and, of course, the Muslim occupation. This fellow filed a complaint against this pastor after seeing these comments in a newspaper story. Pastor is going on trial. We should also note, though, that the director of the Islamic Center is a supporter of ISIS. And he says ISIS has restored order in many Iraqi cities. Of course, they've done that by killing off all of the Christians. They paint a big N on the door for Nazarene as they pass through. And then the follow-up hit squads come through, and when they see the ends, they just march those people out, sell them into slavery, tell them to convert to Islam. If they refuse, bang, 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 bang. Or they string them up. Or they drown them. Or they burn them. Whatever, whatever, you know, tortures they've come up with. So that's what's going on in some of our, what we would call sister countries, Western countries, Ireland, Canada, Norway, Sweden, Germany, England. France, and it's coming to a country near you because we're seeing that, we've seen it with with same-sex relationships. We've seen that, and now we're going to have it with this other, as Heap the writer says, protected class coming along, and that is simply going to spell the end of your liberties because liberty is a synonym for choice. If I choose to speak out against something that I feel is wrong, then I should have that right. When I was a young television reporter, 1993, I believe, I was sent to to cover a rally by neo-Nazis. They were not very nice people. What happened, though, was a couple of thousand people from New York City came in on buses 
to do a counter demonstration in this small town. And they were, of course, just as rude and nasty. And what ended up happening was a near riot. Rocks were flying. I nearly got hit in the head. A sheriff's department van had its windows smashed out. And I thought to myself at the time, if they had just ignored these guys who wanted to have the neo-Nazi rally, let the eight of them stand there and spout from the steps of the city hall on a Saturday morning, on a summer day, and then they would all go home, and that would be the end of it. Because you know what? They got their permit. That is their right as Americans. Heck, the Constitution doesn't even say anything about permits. You may not like what certain people say, but when you, when you start squelching it, you set a precedent that means you can then squelch what everyone is saying. And we are fast headed for that totalitarianism that the liberals would like to enshrine in this country. You're on the air with Bill Colley at 817, temperature 57. And, uh, in fact, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX. What's on your mind? Uh, Bill, you know, Obama missed out one part of his whole plan, and they didn't eliminate the Second Amendment. And I hate to say it, but if something happens in this area right here with all the rednecks, around this area, they're going to find a resistance to their friends. And it is going to be brutal. I will only say this. I, when I arrived in Idaho, I know what I had read. I did not believe it was an extremist place. Uh, you know, there are extremists everywhere. On the other hand, I thought it would be a little bit more conservative than it is. And when it comes to the Republican elected ruling class, I have to say, I don't think that they would be supportive of us. I think that they would throw in their lot with Barack Hussein Obama. And I don't doubt you. That's why I didn't vote for anybody. I didn't vote for anyone that was already on the ticket as a professional class politician. Because they all need to go. They all got to go. They, they're in somebody's pocket. And all they care about is the numeral who knows that box. Yeah, it's a shame. And I thank you much for the call. Uh, we've got people in position everywhere in this country. Uh, again, and I've used that phrase before. It's, I'm not the originator of it. It was George Will in a column he wrote back in the 1990s. And I've never forgotten this, where he said, we have too many politicians who treat their public office as private property. Uh, if you go to our website and you check out our Facebook page, I have a piece I've written uh, about authentic congressional gibberish, about uh, our very own uh, congressman, at least from where I sit, Mike Simpson. And uh, I would I would recommend you check that out because I think it speaks volumes about what we're dealing with. In other words, they're not interested in what you think. They're, 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 <laughs> it's all about them. And, 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 and it's all a show to claim that they are. And they show up, you know, for a couple of months every election year, and that's all you see of them. Hey, got more coming up. Christians being silenced in Colorado. Wanted to mention tomorrow morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, if you've got someone in the family who's having some issues with kidneys, and let's face it, the older you get, we all know people in our family, our neighborhood, people at work who have some, some issues. We've made a lot of advances medically when it comes to, uh, to treating kidney problems, failure, and the like. Dr. Jonathan Tripp is going to be in with us. He's bringing along a specialist as well who can address these issues. That's what we'll be talking about tomorrow morning on Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. And, of course, we're available to take your telephone calls at 736-0300. We do this every week, different topic every week, with the doctor or members of his staff or his associates in the medical community. His office located across the street from the main post office in Twin Falls. In fact, you can find him on Fillmore Street. And remember, I love this slogan, life's too short not to feel good, because that's one thing that we all have to remember as we grow older. If you can maintain a certain, certain health uh, and not have that fail on you, uh, it's a little bit easier to grow old. You can still look in the mirror every morning, and yes, you're, you know you can see wrinkles and you can see gray hair, but you can say, all right, you know, I still feel like I'm at least oh, 49. 824, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com 59. And of course, you can reach our program 736 0300, 736 0300. The Daily Signal, which is uh, the mouthpiece, the organ, if you will, official organ of the Heritage Foundation, 
The hypocrisy of Denver's war on Chick-fil-A. Has anybody here ever flown through the Denver airport? I would imagine when you leave Twin Falls, the local airport, usually a lot of connecting flights go directly to Denver and then on to somewhere else. The writer says, in Denver, city council members are weighing whether Chick-fil-A will be allowed to open in the Denver International Airport. Doesn't matter that the food's really good, right? I, and I have a lot of friends who swear by it. In fact, uh, the last time I had a Chick-fil-A, I ended up having two of the chicken sandwiches. They're that good. It's a little bit, and I probably could have had three, but I was in somewhat of a hurry. The writer says, 10 of the 13 Denver City Council members attended Tuesday's meeting and none rose to defend Chick-fil-A. Now, this is one week ago, and they're just doing the follow-up on the national level. Although some did not weigh in, reported the Denver Post. Chick-fil-A's crime, well back in 2012, when 48% of Americans opposed gay marriage, according to the Gallup, Gallup poll, Chick-fil-A C- CEO Dan Cathy, and this is a wholly owned family business, spoke out about his opposition to same-sex marriage, setting off a firestorm. The fact that the CEO of a company so committed to Christian values that it's not even open on Sundays to oppose same-sex marriage was somehow shocking. And, and you know, I remember when people said, well, we're going to close them down and we're going to have them. In New York City, eight homosexuals showed up. Eight. In a city of eight million, eight homosexuals showed up to scream and yell and claim they were deeply offended, even though apparently none of them had ever actually gone in Chick-fil-A. But a couple of thousand people showed up that very same day and did decide to eat there. In fact, Chick-fil-A, I was told later on, made $2 billion that Wednesday because so many people came out in support, which shows you, and it, you know, your, your good friends over at the liberal media uh, still don't understand that. Uh, they th- seem to think everybody out there is a liberal or homosexual, and I'm sorry if that's redundant, but they, they tend to believe that. And then they try to, if, and if you don't believe it, they try to tell you you're in the minority, and then they try to sell it to you, and if you don't buy it, then they're going to try to force it upon you. Here's something else, though, in this, this, uh, this piece that caught my attention. If the Denver City Council, the writer says, is concerned about the morality of the businesses at the airport, they should take a closer look at two current occupants, Ben & Jerry's and Starbucks. According to Second Vote, Starbucks Foundation has donated to Planned Parenthood. While Starbucks has been listed as a company that matches employees' gifts to Planned Parenthood. Ben and Jerry's parent company, Unilever, has donated to Planned Parenthood as well. Now, if you have been sitting uh, on the moon in the last few weeks, or you've been living under a rock, you may not know it, but at Planned Parenthood, they've been, they've been dicing up little babies. Some of them actually with their hearts still beating, so they can sell the spare parts to universities and other researchers, so they can dice them up even, even more. And that is considered okay. Denver City Council doesn't have a problem with that. The Denver City Council, though, does have a problem that Dan Cathy goes to church. He's been married to the same woman for 40 years and has not had any extramarital affairs. And he goes to church on Sundays and he gives his entire staff Sunday off in case they'd like to go to church. Not forcing anybody to do it, by the way. He just gives them the day off. He could make a fortune. Think about that. It's a great sandwich. All those people leaving church who might actually stop at a Chick-fil-A and buy some lunch. He could make a fortune on Sundays. He chooses not to because of the depth of his religious commitment. And yet, the liberals, and I'm sure some of them probably also belong to that same-sex crowd, they don't want him serving up chicken sandwiches at the Denver airport as a means of punishing him for being a devout Christian. On the other hand, if you're chopping up little babies at Planned Parenthood and someone else is supporting that, good, come and do business. It just tells you how sick and twisted this culture has become. And I don't know about you, but I'm dang sick and tired of it. Now we can wait around until the second coming and the destruction of all of the evil, or perhaps maybe we can postpone that, do something heroic, and take a stand against it. Steve Millington will be joining us in just a few minutes. Bill Colley with you on Newsweek. There goes the voice again. That's called reflux. I should not be eating oranges just before showtime. News Radio 1310, KLIX, as well as News Radio 1310.com. It's 59. And I hope you can stick around. 90 minutes of the program coming up still. And uh, Steve's going to occupy the next half hour of it and fire some things up too as well.